Martha Berry's life work was Berry Schools, an endeavor she founded and ran herself, the legacy of which lives on today in the small liberal arts Berry College. As an educational reformer in the South at the turn of the 20th century, Martha Berry negotiated the existing expectations of an unmarried Southern white woman by working in an ambiguous role that blurred the lines between maternal educator and businesswoman. Berry was born October 7, 1865 to Thomas and Francis Berry. Her father was a wealthy plantation owner and a businessman who served as a captain in the Confederate Army during the Civil War. After Martha Berry's birth, the Berry family moved to the city of Rome, nestled in the foothills of the Appalachian Mountains in northern Georgia. Martha never married, instead choosing to devote her life to educating children that were without the means to access formal education, living in isolated communities in the surrounding mountains. According to an almost mythic founding story, Berry schools began organically, with informal Bible lessons that turned to Sunday schools that in turn transformed into day schools. In the first days of Berry schools, Martha Berry herself taught underserved children on land given to her by her father. However, Berry grew increasingly frustrated with students' infrequent attendance and the limited influence the school was able to exert on students due to the long break in the school year. Barry then changed tactics and built dormitories to expand her operation into a boarding school. The Boys Industrial School was then founded in 1902, with a girls' school following in 1909. Junior and senior colleges were established in 1926. In addition to the idea that her students must live on campus in dormitories, another key aspect of Martha Berry's vision for her schools was that students be required to work, with the formal edu work education program implemented between 1914 and 1915. Work consisted of maintaining school grounds, constructing new buildings, farming, tending to livestock, weaving, and handicrafts. The program served a functional cost by helping to offset expenses and keep tuition as low as possible, but also was a feature of the school as it provided a practical education and gave students skills that they could use to support themselves. Although tuition was relatively inexpensive compared to other schools, students still struggled to pay, and despite Barry's quest for self-sufficiency, the schools relied heavily on donations to keep doors open. Although she founded the Berry School's enterprise as a teacher in the classroom, as the school's population and fame grew, Martha Berry undertook an increasingly public role. She was often away from campus for months at a time as she headed fundraising efforts and embarked on begging trips, as she called them, to solicit donations. Through her efforts, the school was given monetary donations, including large donations from Henry and Claire Ford and Emily Vanderbilt Hammond as well as donations of land that led to the schools amassing 15,000 acres by 1928. Today, Berry College holds the distinction of the largest contiguous campus in the world, with 27,000 acres of land. Following the completion of the feminist art installation Woman House in 1972, Judy Chicago began a new project that would take almost five years to complete. From 1974 to 1979, Chicago, her team, and hundreds of volunteers were consumed with the monumental task of creating the Dinner Party, a feminist installation artwork consisting of a triangular table with place settings for 39 women from throughout history. The table stands on the heritage floor, which includes the names of hundreds of other women, while wall hangings and banners also accompany the exhibit. The work was created using methods that have historically been deemed women's work, such as sewing, embroidery, and china painting. These media have traditionally been devalued as craft rather than fine art. The dinner party's plethora of women honorees and the mixed media approach demanded attention for women and women's work that has often been forgotten or devalued throughout history. From the dinner party grew the collaborative project of the International Honor Quilt, formerly known as the International Quilting Bee. Judy Chicago initiated the project in 1980 by calling on women across the globe to submit a 24-inch equilateral triangle quilt square honoring a woman or women's group of their choosing. The response she received was enormous. 542 quilt pieces were submitted honoring hundreds of women from notable artists such as Mary Cassatt and Frida Kahlo to iconic figures such as Annie Oakley and numerous other women significant in the lives of the quilt maker. Martha Berry was one of these many women honored by a quilt square. Her piece features mountains in the background with multiple school buildings featured prominently in front of them. One white building is perhaps representative of Oak Hill, Martha Berry's home, while another perhaps represents one of the many chapels on Berry's campus. In the foreground, a Bible and oil lamp are shown, indicative of the school's Christian roots and perhaps symbolic of the light of education. The piece was made by a mixture of hand and machine stitching, most likely by someone unfamiliar with embroidery and quilting. Martha Berry's presence on the International Honor Quilt is a testament to her lasting impact on education in Georgia and in the United States. 
as well as to the quilt's power as a tool of widespread collective celebration of women's narratives that are often omitted or devalued.